Hi, welcome to Voice Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to talk about control hub provisioning. So here our objective is to learn about the contact center portal. We're going to talk about the hierarchy of the control hub uh, as well as their roles and understand the creation of the users. Now, there are various portals that are part of your Cisco WebEx solution. You have the CCW portal, which is for registering deals, uh, configuring pricing WebEx Context Center product. This is the Cisco Commerce Workshop. Then you have the Control Hub. This is the web interface that you I've already shown you, a portal that fulfills the order, provisioning the centralized management of your bundle, bundle flex offers, such as Cisco Context Center, Cisco WebEx Calling, and WebEx Team and Mini. You can manage all those three different pro, uh, services from Control Hub. Then you have a Cisco WebEx contact center management portal for managing your contact set tenant. So every time you create a new customer or you assign a new customer uh, a web portal, this will be the contact center management portal or often known as where tenant portal. Agent portal, this is for agent web portal to handle their calls or otherwise uh, desktop, connect and engage, which is a new digital channel portal. Now, what is the relationship between the customers, partners, and Cisco? Cisco, of course, provide the management of your central uh, WebEx contact center data center. But Cisco directly do not <coughs> create customers or uh, provide restriction to customer profiles. These are the job of partners. The Cisco partners with the, with the various level will have partner admin access, which will probably uh, give you a profile uh, based on your purchases. Now, you'll work with your sales staff from Cisco partner sales staff. Partner sales staff will in, in exchange work with Cisco to fulfill your orders through the Cisco commerce page. Once the financial part and the agreement is taken care of, the partner will then create a new account for you. Now, this account will be done on the partner at portal, which is be managed and respons um, uh, will be responsible of the partner to manage that account. Now, once that partner provides you an access, then the customer can log in within customer access to get access to their control hub. This is where customers start to configure uh, settings for, uh, for their organizations. Now you have something called tenant management, which will be managed by uh, the partner and the customers to a certain degree because partner will give customers the access to the tenant management. Customer will use the tenant management to do their day-to-day -day configurations. Then there's a WebEx centers where they will be handling components such as VPOP servers, the media, vo uh, voice media servers, etc. All of them are managed through the control hub. So what is the hierarchy of your control hub? Well, first of all, the hierarchy of Control Hub is that, first of all, each partner is a Cisco certified partner. So there could be silver, premium, premium partner, silver partner, gold partner, or whatnot. Each customer is a customer is a partner's customer, not directly Cisco's customer. And each customer represents an enterprise. Enterprise meaning the company in Control Hub. Now, CH is a short form for Control Hub. So. Once you build a customer in your WebEx uh, control uh, uh, portal, then the customer will have an admin account who can then log in and manage their enterprises. Why the control hub or name organization is important? Well, everything that you do on your control hub is based on your organization, such as registering the gateways, partnering with the cloud PSTN providers, they have to identify you within the WebEx cloud. Remember, WebEx cloud is a cloud, multiple, multi-cloud, belong to multiple companies. It's not, uh, well, it's assigned to multiple companies. It doesn't belong to only one cloud client at a time. So Cisco will map the partners and the customers to their respective organization IDs. So if I am, if you're creating an ID for a customer, that ID will kind of have some sort of reference to the partner that brought that customer into Cisco's world and so and so. 
Now, these IDs are used by various organizations to establish a communication with that enterprise. So what are the roles for the partners? Well, partners' roles are, for example, can have different privileges. They can manage the organization admin role, full admin, read-only admin. They can provide functional admin role to the users or customer management role, such as sales full admin, sales administrator, and help desk administration. All of these services, uh, what are the roles that are defined for the partners can be obtained from this particular website. So feel free to take a look at to get a better understanding in terms of what would be the partner uh, role as a full administrator. So partner users, you will create, uh, each partner users are known as the customers. So you'll create a customer, let's say X, uh, company ABC, you may have a different company called XYZ and so and so. So depending on the privilege, partner user may create other partner users or if they may create their own local users. So partner, uh, partner administration creation. So new partners are created from the customer portal. There you'll see my organization or you have the option to create a new customer. All right, so let's go take a look at what a partner administration looks like. So I am a Cisco partner, well, demo partner. So here, when I log into my web admin.webex.com, I will log in as Webex Partner Hub, or you might only be able to see Control Hub. So there I can add customers, activate trials, or many things I can do. So as you can see, there are a bunch of customers that I might have. These are all, by the way, demo. If I want to start a trial, so let's say I have a new customers coming up and I want to start a trial for that customer, okay? So I'm going to click on start trial and I provide a name for the customer. So it'll be like VBC pod two. So let's assume that's the name of the company and admin email account, business vertical, this is educational company, countries. This is where I will select uh, select a country or region closest to your customer. This will ensure that the organization are provisioned to the region that is close to them. If I select India, then it the WebEx will create the account to a region that is closer to India. So I'm in Canada, so I'll choose Canada, and I'll say I certify the customer is supported location. Now, why is that important? Well, you do not want to get a customer in Iran or North Korea for that matter of the political geopolitical issues. So we're not gonna get into that, but this is where you wanna certify that yes, the customer is in the right location. So it's gonna give you, uh, based on information, we have, we have identified, okay, so they already account exist. So let's try a different one. All right, so now is a start new trial. So if a customer goes, hey, Faisal, I want to try out with these, these features. So I could say, okay, I'll give them advanced messaging. I will give them advanced space meeting, WebEx meeting up to 1,000. Mm, you know, who's gonna use 1,000 agent? Real-time translation, WebEx assistance, and this is where it's defined the calling part. You can specify the calling, whether Cisco plan is supported or WebEx go. Now Cisco plan, the customer will be able to obtain a Cisco plan directly. You can click on the list of countries that are available for uh, Cisco plan, for example, uh, which countries are available? And Canada is one of them. Uh, so these are the only country currently supports Cisco plan. And you can get an idea about how to set up your Cisco plan and uh, manage your you know, billing and whatnot. So I'm gonna specify that. Now, devices are for the hardware and for uh, the, th those big uh, conference room devices. I'm not going to assign any room devices at this moment. Device lo loan for tr Cisco can loan you the device, but you have to go through a quite a bit of partnership. Now, license quality, the number of license user you need, 100 at the default, I'm going to make that 15. Don't need more. Trial duration, 90 days, 30 days, or 60 days. And then they said no non-trial services. If you want contact Cisco contact center, enter, uh, Cisco Unified contact center contact services to be uh, accessible. Not gonna worry about that for now. I'm gonna click next. Now it's gonna ask, uh, ask you to define a URL. So this is where you define uh, a domain name, right? So you're gonna say VBC pod three. So VBC pod three dot webex.com. And if you click on validate, because you need a domain name, 
you have to click on validate to see if it's available. So if I select this, it will say, yes, it's a valid site. I got 20 of these domains, so I can keep using them. Uh, you can specify the Toronto uh, as your, uh, what do you call, location or uh, time zone. It'll be my, uh, my negative uh, minus five. So New York is close enough. Same time zone. All right, so I am starting my trial. So now it's gonna send an email to admin at vbcpod3.com, an invitation email that uh, administrator of that company can then use to start their uh, WebEx control. So trial has been added and customer cannot begin their trial. Regional settings configured by partner. Go to customer setup to set up the regional setting, okay? Mm, all the trials so vbc part three so it's waiting for provisional so as a partner what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to click on setup customers so i'm going to help them set it up so i'll come to that in a minute but right now that's how we add a new customers the partner sales administrator so these are basically uh the sales administrator supports two roles sales administrator have no access to the customers of the partner organization so a sales admin will not have the information about the partner or login access if you use a sales administrator privilege sales full admin however has access to full list of customers managed by the partner so if i make you the sales admin of my uh, my uh, partner hub you will have by default no access to my customers of my other customers Whereas if I make you full admin, then you'll have full access to all the customers that I have in my list. Now, partner sales users with the sales full administration can view and manage any customer partner of the organization. So for example, if I go to the administrator, you'll see that bunch of us are administrators here. I can make myself, uh, I can view all the customers. Most of them are trial, then none of them are uh, active actually. Uh, actually in use per se. So they're provisioning, I can see all the details I want to. But before we can go, we have to set up the customer. I'll show you how that is done. A partner users with a sales admin cannot access customers in their partner organization. However, I can create other sales admin and might assign might be assigned uh, uh, to a customer if I if need to. So someone with a full admin can assign me as a sales admin to another customer. Okay. So you can specify the customer role. You can say, oh, the third person is a full administration or say, uh, just administrator. So with the sales administrator, once you check that option, you can read, write, assign customer organization, but you cannot see the customers. Now, once a partner user can be assigned to manage a specific customer, so you can if you have a part if you're a partner and you have two employee you could say okay employee one will manage customer one two three employee two will manage customer three six seven and eight so this way you can give them a privilege to access certain customers not the other all right external administrator role what are the role for users that are outside of your organization a user from your outside your organization that has admin role or administrator from a partner in this scenario, you can either assign them as a full administrator, read-only administrator, or provisioning administrator. Customer roles. You can have a customer, which is an enterprise or tenant, uh, has a contact center service at one or more sites. A customer admin, which is basically a customer administrator, which is a full administrator in this scenario. And then of course you have customer users, where users can be defined with the different privileges. You can make them a full organization admin, functional admin, or services. The organization admin has full access, read-only admin, or full admin. But the functional admin role has about four different roles. Support admin, user and device admin, admin, uh, device, uh, sorry, user and device admin, or just device admin, as well as admin troubleshooting accesses. So you can customize this, each one of them into your role. So customer users, for example, a customer for Mike's Auto. Depending on the privilege, customer user may create other customer users. 
And that can be done by going to your control hub, go to users and to look at your profile. And you'll see that your profile will be assigned a full administrator. For partner portal, uh, once you log into control hub with your partner access, you'll get a partner portal that looks like this. I just shown you a scenario where you can say this is a, a chat as well as contact services available. You can start a new trial. You can uh, um, cl click on the green button to start setting up the region for the customers or some settings. You can, once you log in to the customer, into the customer account, you'll see the control hub, which will give you the dash landing dashboard once a customer logs in. All right, so that's the overview about the partner admin. Now we're gonna go, next video we'll talk about control hub for customer portal.